How's that for an opening act? <laughs> yeah, good morning, everybody. Good to be back. Cha-Cha's the opening act. How's that? All right? That's like uh, having the flying Walendas as your opening act. Okay? Oh, good morning, Andrea. Andrea says good morning. Can you hear me? All right? I always like to check the sound, make sure that uh, we are around. On a very eventful morning, you know, my son learned a lesson today. He went to a, a camp. Uh, he's a counselor at a camp and uh, uh, and the whole thing. And the meeting was scheduled for today by accident. It was really tomorrow, but he went anyway today just in case. And I applaud him for his effort. Uh, can anybody hear me? Andrea, I want to know if you can hear me. Welcome aboard, everybody, on a lovely Friday morning. That's all. There you go. Away we go. A lot to talk about. Uh, uh, so, but first, I got to thank everybody for uh, uh, being here in my absence. Okay. We, uh, of course, love the Lou, and uh, we always love the Lou. And, and of course, uh, with uh, Arnie and Arnie's Army, and of course, with Cha Cha leading off, we have a great lineup now. Uh, we're really fine tuning it, and we'll be ready to go pretty soon. All right. Thanks to everybody for being here in the chat room. Good morning to you all. And yes, I did listen to uh, a lot of the shows. Okay. And I did hear yesterday, both Andrea and Lou talking about Cody Allen. And uh, here's the thing. This comes from John Heyman, who reports that no less than 11 teams have acquired about the new free agent Cody Allen. So I know there was some discussion. As I don't say you go pick him up, uh, but he he's a long shot. And in the uh, you know, of course, this year, uh, just like many other years, the closer situation is uh, so crazy. Uh, so anyway, uh, Cody Allen being pursued by no less than eleven teams. Now, uh, for those of you of Kyle Hendricks, uh, very little has been said about his injury. It's unclear how long he's going to be out, okay? Chance, uh, they t they could hold him back until the All-Star break. That's what I'm hearing now. So if you have Kyle Hendricks, as I do, you may have thought it might be he'll only miss one turn. Looks like it's going to be a little bit more than one turn, okay? And, of course, we're all waiting for the next uh, drop for the Mariners. Uh, the consensus is it may be D. Gordon. And by the way, Unholy Toledo, we are coming out to uh, Toledo to see you in uh, sometime mid-July, mid okay? So we'll confirm all that, and then we're going to head to Chicago, and we'll arrange all that for anybody who can meet us out there as well. But as the Mariners continue to to dump their contract, it's very interesting to see, and they're, I think they're doing it the right way. Their future payroll situation is very clear. Their contractual obligations for 2020 is $65 million. Okay, so they'll get rid of a couple other people. 2021, right now, $41 million. And then 2022, that's the year that they really begin to ramp it up. Their contractual obligations are zero. So uh, the Mariners, really, they have a plan. We can see what it is, and away we go. And I think this is the year. In looking at the Yankees, and now they're getting Aaron Judge back, they got Stanton back, they got D.D. back, and, uh, I, I, you know, and, and, and Frazier. I don't even know if he's reported yet. Uh, and Gardner now is uh, the fourth outfielder. So a lot of things going on. D.J. LeMayu, really MVP this year in the American League. But we, So we see the Yankees just keep on winning even though they're losing their players. And then we, you know, and what's gone a little unnoticed could be the Astros, who went 24-11 and 11 without Jose Altuve, okay? And that was the American League's best record over that span of time, 24-11. and 11. So the Yankees did it, uh, you know, winning without their stars. The Astros doing it without Jose Altuve, and uh, interesting. And, to, and Sunday on Sirius Radio, and by the way, it's going to be our next to the last show on Sirius. Uh, Andy, we were told yesterday we'll be doing this week and next week. And uh, this week we're going to be doing 
uh, a draft, a second half draft. And I take the position that there's got to be a change in fantasy baseball. And that has to be this. With too many people, with all the injuries and everything and the IL and uh, too many people, you know, getting uh, uh, a little, you know, a little complacent, a little tired uh, playing the game so many years. You have a bad team, you lose interest. You have injuries, you lose interest. I say, and I'd like to know the opinion in the chat room, of having your draft in March and then stop it. In, the season ends at the end of January. And then, during the All-Star week, when I say the end of January, maybe, you know, first right before the All-Star game. Or maybe the end of January. We'll see. But uh, And then have another draft and start a second league fresh. And then combine the first and second half to determine the, the ultimate winner. All right? Does anybody think that that... Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> does anybody think that that's a good way of playing fantasy baseball? Have two separate uh, seasons within the year and then combine the totals. This way, if you're in last place, you got all the injuries, you're in last place, uh, you still have a chance to get into it by doing well in the second half of the season, okay? And you still have a chance, you still, you still want to move up because the stats still count. So we'll be doing what we'll be doing, and Cha Cha is going to be on. So this is not a show that you want to miss. Uh, we're going to be doing a draft, a first round, second half draft. So with all that being said, I mean, we'll um, uh, if you take a look at the first two rounds in a mixed league, will uh, Bryce Harper be in the first two rounds? Will Altuve go in the first two rounds? Will Goldschmidt? go in the first two rounds. Those are three staples of the first or second round, okay? Uh, and Andrea's right there. She's in full blast. She's been up for a couple of hours, so the F words are, uh, you know, this is not new, all right? This is coming out all morning. Anyway, so uh, will Harper go in the first two rounds? If you were doing a second half draft, will Goldschmidt go? Will Altuve go? And will a pitcher go in the second half in the first two drafts? So those are some of the things that uh, we'll be talking about. And yeah, please, and please chime in uh, now. One of the things that bugs me, and by the way, I will be on with Craig Mish today on the Fantasy Sports Network at around 12 o'clock. I'll be on for a couple of segments with Craig. So uh, stay tuned for that if you can. And uh, the Reds pitching staff, you know, if you remember the beginning of the year, I was hell-bent on betting on the Cincinnati Reds. And same way Andrea was hell-bent on betting on Trevor Bauer. So, And the Reds were like 20 to 1. And so was Trevor Bauer at the time. So I don't think the Trevor Bauer thing is going to work out. And, of course, until now, I really didn't think that the Reds had a chance to win the World Series or be in the World Series. But their pitching staff, second lowest ERA in the National League behind the Dodgers, and when they played the Astros and they swept them <coughs> in a, in a tremendous big series, they gave up seven runs in their three-game sweep. And after they opened the year one and eight, the Reds are now thirty-three and thirty. That's the second best in the National League Central, only behind the Cubs. So it could be, and I think the Cincinnati team. I think they're ready to go, and they're going to get Scooter Gannett back. And uh, look, you know, so, um, uh, and, you know, and by the way, in that sweep against the Astros, it was the first time since 2013 that the Reds had won three consecutive one-run games. So that's what they're doing, and it looks like Michael Lorenzo is getting a chance to get some saves. Okay? Uh, how mu- Look, but we all know, that the game has changed so much. Here's how much it's changed. Really, it's crazy. In 2011, the Phillies, who's, who's the, the team that's really gone into the tank, the Phillies allowed 120 runs in the entire season, and they allowed their 120th run in the second game of Game 73 just a couple of days ago. 
So they've already surpassed their entire season of allowing home runs from 2011. And here's something else. Back, if you go back to June 17th, the Royals and the Tigers had combined to score 90 runs that month in the month of uh, June. 90 runs on June 17th combined, Tigers and the Royals. And the Rockies and the Padres combined to score 92 runs in the one series that they just completed. So all month long, okay, you got the Tigers and the Royals combining to score 90 runs, while in one series, the Rockies and the Padres combined to score 92 runs. Unbelievable, okay? Just um, good morning. Brandon Bartlett has made it back. This is the longest honeymoon that I've ever seen in the history of marriages. His honeymoon uh, is probably lasting more than my two marriages, okay? So good morning. Nice to see Brandon Bartlett here, big fan. Uh, Minnesota guy, whatever he is. Thank you, Brandon, for coming in. And uh, we'll say hello to everybody in just a few minutes, okay? And uh, But Max Scherzer, Max Scherzer, what a job he did, okay? A broken nose, black eye. It wasn't even a black Why do they call it a black eye? It was multicolored eye, okay? And he, no problem. He got a season-high 18 swinging strikes, on a fastball that averaged over 96 miles an hour, and that's his best um, swinging strike in a game since 2015. Now, here's the thing that I'm bothered with, and I'm really bothered with, and I'm really disappointed, because as soon as that came out, I knew Scherzer was going to go on the mound and do a good job, uh, and, and, and I would come, I want to see... I want to see a bobblehead. A ma- I guarantee it's going to come out. A Max Scherzer bobblehead complete with a multicolored eye and a swollen nose and a face and the whole thing. All right, would you get that bobblehead? The Max Scherzer bobblehead complete with a broken nose and a multicolored eye. That's, that's what I'm waiting for. Uh, with all the uh, hullabaloo about Patrick Corbin and Washington now starting to play much better, and uh, they're becoming a threat. And Washington, of course, a team that could go either way. If they drop out, they were nine games behind a couple of days ago. Uh, if they went the other way, they would be marketing Max Scherzer. And, and I wonder about Patrick Corbin, who's allowed 13 home runs this year in 15 starts. Last year, he allowed 15 home runs in 33 starts. So you can't tell me that Patrick Corbin's having a great year. And all right, here's a trivia question. Andrea, you got to stay out of this, okay? Because I asked her yesterday, and I will tell you, she got it on the first guess. So let's see if anybody in the chat room could uh, do what Andy did yesterday. Name the only team in Major League Baseball that has not produced a 40 home run season by any one player. Name the only team in Major League Baseball that has not produced a 40 home run season by any one player. And while you're thinking about that, uh, let me say good morning to uh, the beer man. Hey, beer here, Brandon Bartlett. Greg is here. Thank you, Greg. Cam, Cha-Cha, Chris Allen, uh, always sleeping in the chat room. Dirty Eck, DK Loosh, uh, Danny, Easy Kill, Jay Bass, Jimmy Ross, Keith Robinson, going to try to make it to Cleveland as well in July. Leonard Donaldson, Southpaw, Mr. Roloff, The Real Double A, Traveler, Unholy Toledo, and Zelmo. Thank you all for being here. And if you missed it, Unholy Toledo, middle of July, we want to come out and say hello. So uh, we'll keep in touch to let you know exactly what. The only team that hasn't um, ever had a 40 home run guy. And so far, nobody has got it right. Not oh yeah, 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 wait a second. Keith Robinson, first one in gets it right. All right, Keith Robinson says Kansas City and the Kansas City Royals are the only team never to have a forty home run season. Now Jorge Solar has twenty home runs uh, hit on June eighteenth, and it's uh, you know the franchise record is thirty eight by Mike Mustakas in two thousand seventeen. But Solar is the eighth uh, Kansas City player to reach twenty before the All Star break. Let's see where he winds up with. And of course, with all the changes about the New York Mets, uh, Met pitchers have thirty one hits this year. So they're not pitching well, but they're hitting good. The next most by any team's pitchers is 19, and they have 10 extra base hits. 
the next most is seven. So who needs a pitching coach? Let's use the hitting coach. Now, Jordan Alvarez, five home runs in his first nine career games. And that's tied for second for the most home runs in a player's first.